Hi, so this is the final video in the series where we've been looking at the uh, specimen paper one and it's paper three for the Edexcel Mathematics higher tier. Um, as before, please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions and then compare your answers. Now this particular video is going to deal with the final few questions in this particular paper. So we're going to start with question number 20. And 20 deals with mathematically similar products. And that's the key phrase with this, where we're looking for this idea that this particular shape is going to be exactly the same or mathematically similar to this shape. It's just going to be slightly bigger. And the information that we're given is that we've got a base area of six on the model, and then the statue has got a base area of that. So really what that tells is it allows to work out the constant of proportionality. Now in this particular case, um, if I divide 253.5 by six, what I'm actually going to get is 42.25. Now that's exactly the same as saying k squared. So if it's k squared and I square root it, I'm going to get a constant of 6.54k. And then if I cube it, I'm going to get a constant of 65 cubed. Okay, now I can use all of that information then to be able to work out the answers to the question. So it says clay is sold in bags of uh, 10 kilograms and we've got to work out how many, how much clay is going to be used for the actual statue itself. Okay, so the clay required to make the statue, if I just write this into here, so clay required for statue Okay, so that's going to be the clay that is required for the actual model, which is 2 kilogram, and I'm going to multiply that by 6.5 to the power of 3, because it's that k cubed, it's the constant cube that I talk about to work through for volume. Okay, so that's going to work out as... 549.25 kilograms so therefore in this particular case the number of bags required well each bag holds 10 kilograms so if I divide that by two it's going to give me 54.9 or 55 bags of clay and that's the answer to this particular question okay hope that's okay for you let's move on then to question number 21 uh, question number 21 deals with uh, something called iteration so if you're not sure about any of this please do have a look at some of the uh, playlists on the channel and you can have a look at uh, several examples of how iteration works um, usually with these sorts of questions the first part of it is a rearrangement and what we're going to do is take that and make it look like that so the way we're going to do that is I'm going to um, just manipulate this a little bit so I've got at the moment 3x squared minus x cubed plus 3 so I'm going to take that x cubed and I'm going to put it towards the right hand side so I can write that as 3x squared plus 3 equals x cubed Okay, and then I want to solve, or at least I want to make x the subject of this particular formula, or this particular equation. So what I'm going to do is divide then through by x squared. Now on the right hand side, that means that x cubed divided by x squared is going to be equal to x on its own, which is exactly what I'm looking for. On the left hand side, I've got 3x squared plus 3 divided by x squared. Now it looks a little bit uh, difficult at the moment, but if we just separate those out a little bit, I've got 3x squared over x squared. So those two cancel themselves out. And then I've got plus 3 over x squared, and that equals x. So if I write this whole thing um, a little bit tidier than I've written it there, it's going to be 3 on its own, which is what we're looking for, and then 3 over x squared. 
okay and that equals x okay hope that's okay for you let's move on then to part two of this question now again very very similar uh, layout on all of the questions on iteration and it just basically says using this iteration formula that we've just we've just derived this this one here um, and starting with x0 equals 3.2 use that to find the next three values so basically what we're saying is is that x0 equals 3.2 x1 is where we take this value of 3.2 and we put it into the iteration formula so in this case it's 3.2 squared so i can write that as 3 plus 3 over 3.2 squared and when i calculate that i'm going to get 3.29 296875 and that's my first value of x1 so i can write that off to one side x1 equals 3.292968875 now it doesn't give any guidance um, in terms of the amount of decimal places that you need. So if I were you, I would just write it all out in its entirety and then you should be able to get the marks for this. Okay, so what we're doing now with iteration, we take this value and we plug it back into the same formula. So it's going to be x2, 3 plus 3 over. Now, rather than writing all of that out again, I'm just simply going to put answer squared so if you use your calculator you'll be able to do that and you'll be able to work that value out as x2 and that's going to be equal to 3.2794206850 okay brilliant and then finally x3 actually I beg your pardon I've used the wrong one there that's going to be 27 I'll just cross that out. So that's going to be 3.2766596786. Okay, that's the problem with they're doing these sorts of videos. Okay, and then X3. I'm going to again plug it straight into the formula, and that's the answer of X2. So it's actually all this here, and I'm going to put that squared. That allows me then to work out X3, and that will be 3.279. 420685 and those are the three values that it's asked us to uh, to calculate okay and then um, the final little bit of it is explain what these values represent. Well, basically, it's the value of um, iteration is getting this value closer and closer. So this is actually a cubic. Yeah, it's a cubic graph, so it goes something like that. So it's actually getting closer and closer to the values of. Um, uh, the value of the true value of x value of x okay um, so on a cubic graph okay all right and then we're on then to finally the final question on this particular um, exam paper which is question number 22 now with this one I thought long and hard about how to approach this and I've seen if you google this particular question there's quite a lot of uh, controversy online about this and it actually centers around this word any um, to prove that the difference between the squares of any two terms, so it could be that term and that term, is always a multiple of 24, is actually really, really difficult. So I'm going to change this because I think the purpose of the video really is to try to encourage you to um, have a look at these types of questions. And I'm not sure that this question would have appeared on a GCSE, bearing in mind these are sample papers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to any subsequent, okay, so what I mean is those two terms there next to each other, okay? And if you have a look at algebraic proof on one of the playlists on the channel, you'll be able to follow this through, hopefully, because what we're basically going to be doing is making sure that we can prove algebraically that it's a multiple of 24. Um, I, wouldn't, I will post a video using this word any on its own and I will reference through or link through from this video into that video um, and hopefully you'll be able to see the difference. Okay so what we're saying is the nth term well 
with this, you can work out the nth term of the arithmetic sequence as being 6n plus 1. And what we've actually got there is this is uh, 6 times the values, this is the, or 6 times the place, this is the first place and second place and third place, and so on. All of these have got a difference of 6. So the first term or the nth term will be 6n plus 1. And again, if you're not sure about how I've come across that, please do have a look at some of the arithmetic sequence playlists. So this would be the first term. OK, but if we're looking at the next or the subsequent term, the one after that, then what I'm going to say is that that would actually be 6n plus 7. So this will be the second term. OK, so what I'm going to do now is use these two in this particular statement. OK, so I can say it says prove that the difference between the squares. So what I'm going to do is 6n plus 7 squared minus 6n plus 1 squared. OK, now if we work that all out, we should be able to then find that um, 24 is a factor of this particular um, equation. So if I multiply this out, I'm going to get 6n plus 7 times 6n plus 7. And that's minus. And like I've done before, I'm going to put some big brackets in because it reminds me then I've got this minus sign here. So in here, I'm going to get 6n plus 1 multiplied by 6n plus 1. OK, so let's have a look at then working all of this out. Well, 6 times 6 is going to be 36 n squared plus 6 times 7 is 42 n plus 42 n again plus 49. So this is this one here. And that's going to be minus, and again, I'm going to put this in big brackets just to remind myself, and that's going to be 36n squared. 6 times 6 is 6, plus 6 again is plus 12n, and that's plus 1. OK, be careful, 1 times 1 is 1. OK, so let's then remove, this mi or remove these brackets, and then this minus sign will have an effect upon each of the terms in here. OK, so I've got 36n squared, and that's going to be plus 84n, plus 49, and that's minus 36n squared, which is pretty good because those are going to cancel themselves out. Minus a plus is going to be a minus 12n, and then minus a plus is going to be minus 1. So what I end up with then is losing quite a lot of this information here. So what I end up with is 84n minus 12n, well that's going to be 72n, and I've got plus 49 minus 1 is plus 48. So that's really the key point of this, that what I can do then is I can factorise this for 12, uh, 24. So if I factorise this for 24, I get 3n plus 2. Now that, what that means then is that um, it must be a multiple of 24. OK, so I hope that's all right for you. It does take a little bit of time to actually work through. Um, it's a fairly standard algebraic proof, but it's been made a lot more difficult by the use of that word any. So um, I think on the basis of trying to encourage you to have a look at these types of work, I'm going to leave it like that. And then, I, as I mentioned before, I will post a different video. I hope that's been OK for you. Please don't hesitate to add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. Uh, I'll always come back to you, subscribe to the channel and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.